and, uh, and, and especially he's very gracious to join us here in his like terrible uh, schedule for, uh, re for the release of his picture. Oh, thank you. I've, I've seen the picture a couple of times now, and I, I thought it would be interesting if you were able to give us a sense of, uh, I understand, many years of preparation for the right. picture. And uh, the archives, the, uh, the interviews you did, the traveling to, to set the scene for how long it took to prepare. Because the film is basically follow the life of it, man, and and actually I, it uh, went through so many different periods in the early time of our republic, and I had no ideas about martial art because I'm a big fan of uh, our martial art, but I never had uh, actually a chance to practice it. So to to be able to understand his world, and it took me three years to uh, to to travel across the country, to doing interviews, to to attend demonstrations. I think I've, I've uh, interviewed more than like a, a hundred masters. Wow. Uh, In terms of your choreographer, Wan Wo Ping, yeah, yeah I, could you tell us a little about working with him? And uh, I, I can't imagine working with the actors, uh, um, the fight scenes with the actors, the training the actors have to go through. And uh, uh, what was what would a normal day or a week for one of the actors for Tony Leung? Well, basically, they are, they are very fine actors, uh, Tony Leung, Zhang Ziyi, and Zhang Zhen. But, uh, but the problem is they never practiced martial art before. <laughs> but but when, when you look at this film, this, uh, this character is like, uh, when we know the life story of Yip Man, he's not actually uh, trained to be a, a fighter. He was from a very privileged class, and he's actually a very elegant person. So we have to, to ask... Uh, someone like Tony Leung to play these characters instead of looking for an action star. And so they have to went through like uh, two years of hard training. And I still remember, because I'm very lucky, I, I work with um, Yong Hu Ping, who is the legendary like, uh, uh, um, action choreographer. And he, he is actually 70 years old. And he's, he went through all this period. And so he understands the intention. So the first thing I think in our first meeting I said, well, uh, um, I call her. Uh, I call him Bagye because that means his uncle. He's uh, uh, a senior. So I said, "Well, I want this film to be different." He said, "Yes, every director when we work together, he said I want something different." <laughs> so how different do you want? I said, "Okay, the uh, uh, I want this film to be done like in the most authentic way, as authentic as possible. I want to see all the move is very authentic." to the school. If he's, play, if he's a Wing Chun master, he has to do Wing Chun thing. So he's not going to be, there's no wire, there's no flying. So, and, and he, he looked at me, he said, are you serious? <laughs> I said, yes. And he said, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I bring him to the training camp to look at uh, Tony Leung and Zhang Ji because I trained them with actual trainer for two years. So when, when he looked at Tony and Ji, he said, well, okay. I know you're, you're serious now. So it's, 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 a, it's a, a very hard uh, process to do the action for this film. And in fact, when we are doing, uh, um, doing all choreographies, um, sequence, I always look at your sequence at Raging Bull yeah. with oh. my DP. Because I think wow. that's the, one of the best action scenes made uh, in the history of cinema. And so it, there's no tricks besides of special makeups, blood. Basically it's a cinematic tour, it's a cinematic journey and which captures purely by like uh, camera and movement and action. So it's, I, I just want to, to, to show Yang Ping is like, well, this is something that we are looking for. We are not looking for something just for excitement. You have to feel the pain and and the substance of it. Mm. Amazing! I I, um, <laughs> I didn't realize that. That's uh, <laughs> you. So you mean I uh, to be uh, naive again? So you mean that even every move, every move at the feet, and everything that's done by the actors in that terms, uh, the way the way they uh, the way they deal with the martial arts in the picture. Yeah, it's something funny because normally when you're shooting a, a scene or setup. Most of the time, people look at the director. 
to say, well, if it is okay or not, right? So, but on our set, besides me and Yang Wu Ping, we're in front of this monitor, but at the same time, there's our consultant, or the master from that school standing there. <laughs> so after every take, so all the actors will look not to us, but look, look at them and say, they say, okay, then that's okay. <laughs> but sometimes it's very hard because it's when you have the actual martial artist on set, they will say, well, no. If they're that good, they won't fight for three minutes. It's normally a one punch or one kick. And, but most of the time, it's so fast you won't see it. Wow. So I said, but that doesn't work in our case. <laughs> no, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so we have to, to ask them to do the demonstrations and to analyze. And also, there's some, sometimes very sensitive. It's about who's going to win and who's going to lose. Oh, yeah. So it represents the schools. So it's, it's a lot of works over there. And this is all based on, of course, the actual styles and techniques and the cultural differences yes. in terms of the fighting. I read an interview with Tony Leon in which at one point he told you that he thought he was going to die. <laughs> but you said, we must go on. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, it's, it's very, very funny because I, 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 I'm very lucky to have Tony to, to, to be my collaborator for, for so many films, and especially for this one because it is very hard. But I know before I, I, I saw these pictures, I spoke with him. I said, well, Tony, I'm going to, to make a movie about your man because I know he's a big fan of Bruce Lee. And I said, well, you're going to play his master. He said, fine, <laughs> cool. And I want to do it, but I said you have to do all this hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, uh, sequence by yourself. There, there won't be a double, so you need, that means you have to do some serious training. He said, he think about it. He said, okay, it's never too late. I'm only 47, <laughs> and he broke his arms twice during the shoot. He, he broke his arm twice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you say he's 47. Uh, when we start, he's 47. When he started, he's, <laughs> he's much older. <laughs> There's still hope, guys. There's still hope. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, needless to say, special effects are minimal in the film. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm a very analog guy, so yeah. uh, I try to have as much things done. Uh, instead of like uh, dealing with green screen. I, I don't know your experience about this. The green screen is hard, yeah. yeah. Because the green screen sometimes said it's like it will help a lot, because, uh, but that gives you a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. Because I think blue screen, green screen basically is something that you need to be very clear, very precise about what you want, what you will achieve at the end. But my process is I green screen give me an excuse that maybe I want to do it this way but it's going to be hell. So I prefer everything is like as analog as possible. And the only thing in this film uh, which is digital is uh, the train because I cannot ask uh, Jiang Jiu to fight in front of a running yeah. train. <laughs> I was going to ask. Yeah. If you were uh, Buster Keaton is fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I wondered about, but it, it's amazing, especially the window hitting the window and all fantastic sequences. Like, okay. give me an example of uh, I, one example. There must be many, but when you what, you took three years shooting, or yeah. So the level of obviously the level of perfection in terms of movement, uh, body movement of the body in the frame, the movement of the frame. Um, what was one of the hardest or most difficult ones that sometimes something has to be shot 10, 12, 30 times, you go back a week later, shoot it again, one shot probably, right. was it the water around the hat? No, that, that is not that hard. I think the, the biggest problem actually is the weather, is uh, uh, because uh, there's three chapters in the film. The first chapter happened in the south in 1936, and the second chapter happened in Manchuria in the, during the 40s. And so, and the last chapter happened in Hong Kong. So the ideal plan, we're supposed to shoot the film like for six months. And so <laughs> the ideal plan is to shoot 
uh, in the winter in the south because it is not very cold and it's not too hot because south can be very hot. And we can do the, 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 the Manchuria sequence uh, after spring. But somehow when we start the first sequence, Tony broke his arm during the rehearsal. So there we, we don't have any options. We cannot stop the production. So we have to move our productions to Manchuria and start the, the second chapter, which is freezing. Last night when I get here, get into New York, <laughs> I said, well, it reminds me of all my nights, uh, of, uh, in the Manchurian nights. Because for the sequence of Zhang Ziyi, he's fighting at the train station. We spent two months over there. Wow. Yeah. On a very remote station outside of Shenyang. Wow. And every night, the weather is as cold as last night. So oh. she has to, to, to do all the action by herself. And we are like some poor fellow, like we, we live in a tent and <laughs> we sleep on the street with all this burner around us. And you being at once, well, we are looking at the monitor, we are very focused, but somehow I, I smell something, I see his coat, because he has a very big coat, and he's getting smoke. Oh. <laughs> and he caught fire. From the heaters, from the heater? Yes, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. 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 So you're talking about maybe two, three setups a night? Yes, yes. Oh, and that cold and going through a layers. And for that scene, there's almost like a hundred of cuts. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, that's an extraordinary, extraordinary achievement. It really is. Like we say about uh, Wong Kar Wai's films, it's like there's something that only can be a film, you know, the essence of cinema. And this is his work. It really is. But I know, I don't know, like, for the scenes in, in, in Raging Bull, how, the, the fight scene in the rain, how long does it take? Oh, uh, yeah, it, uh, we had planned uh, four weeks, it took ten weeks. And then we did the scene where he gets beaten by Sugar Ray, that was uh, maybe two setups a day. Right. Yeah, the same, same thing. Same, same thing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. very time consuming when you're doing action. Yeah, okay. that, that sort of action. And very often we had to use slow motion because we couldn't see Right. The fist going by. Uh, right. we, we couldn't see the... the it, it, it went too quick. Yes. So they said, oh, he's using slow motion. I said, at least we can see it. You know, we can see the action, what's going on. You know. And, and my, my problem is different because I can see. That means they are not very fast because it's, they have so many coats on. So sometimes we use slow motion because now it seems like, well, it's very powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> in terms of... The, in terms of um, the production is three years. What about the editing process? Because of the way you cut your films, I find just to ask you how you do it, or not how you do it, but how do you? What's the? It takes. Uh, what's the length of time it took? How you work? Do you work every day at it? Do you work with the editor? Um, yeah, because I I, th I think it, my process is more or less like yours because you work with Thelma. With Thelma, yeah. Right. Yes, Two who's, who's I consider like the, the one of the best editor yeah, in, in our generation. And so and I work with uh, William, yes. my production designer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, basically we, we, we shoot the scenes and then um, he cut at the same time. Ah. So, but the thing is he always uh, do scene by scene. It's like uh, individual pieces. Yes. So I'm the one who at the end put all these things together and then we would do all this fine tune afterwards. Oh, it's fantastic. Right? Yeah. But it, how, what was the length of time for the, for the editing on this? The actual time that we have to put this film together, I can give you like a, a clue, is we have the film, we need to release the film in China in, in January last year. And we're still shooting some like uh, cutaway close up <laughs> before Christmas. Excellent, excellent. No, no, I've been in that position. Just been in there, yeah, yeah. We just did with Wolf of Wall Street. I delivered the film two days before. That was it. I think they wanted it on November 18th. I gave it to them on the 19th. I just couldn't do the 18th. I couldn't. <laughs> I'm not getting on the 18th, you know? Yes. <laughs> We just don't want 19. To, that's it. We just want to make sure. <laughs> I, I was told that you play music often when you shoot. Yeah. 
I heard it's uh, you. You did that also, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I learned it from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the most efficient way because sometimes without like very specific uh, uh, script, and and I think it's very important because I think make, making films most of the time you uh, is something very key is about the rhythm, yeah. and I think the music on the set. Is it rhythm? Yes, give a sense of the rhythm, especially with for the camera, yes. for the blocking, and for the movement of the actors. I think that works very well. No, Thank I you. use playback a lot. Uh, yes. For 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 movement, camera movement, camera movement. Really. But the problem is, I always fall in love with that music. Yeah, I know. That's the. <laughs> well, the thing is, you have to use the music you're going to use. Yes. We think. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, in, in other but, words, and I always try to get get them the, uh, after we finish the film. And then. And then it's nightmare, you know. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But well, we started this kind of years ago. We started it in a kind of naive way. It was just uh, we were able to get um, uh, the music, let's say, in Mean Streets, and it cost a lot of money at that time, but nothing to what it is now. I think we were able to afford uh, five or six really key songs, and I did play back uh, the music, um, but we knew those were the songs, and they had, the producers started working on getting some sort of a deal, and they, they did it. That was 1973, though, and uh, within five or six years, that changed. Completely. Today is really hard, because it's, it's become so expensive. Yeah, I found on Wolf of Wall Street that th there were a couple of cues that I had, and it's almost a three-hour film. There's music from wall to wall, and uh, there were a couple of places that I happened to use by accident, because we were shooting so fast, we were getting everything, and it has an energy that's kind of crazy, and so this piece of music here, okay, put that on, and then we're doing, and so I had to use that music then in the editing, and then I got used to it, yes. but they were charging us $500,000 for us, no, I'm not going to do it, right. and so I had then to what find, are you going to do? So I had, that, in those cases, I found other pieces, other right. pieces that, that were, but you see, they weren't, they weren't pieces of music that um, I grew up with, or that I listened to, there were different types of music, and so it was really the, the uh, atmosphere that I was going for. And it's, it's always like, uh, it's, it's killing us. It's, uh, because you fall in love with the music and you cut with its music, it's perfectly rhymed with its music. Oh. Because people said, well, how come your music works so well with your pictures? Because the film actually spoiled with them. So it's, it's very hard to take them out. I know, right. I know, I know. In fact, a couple of places, actually it was one 500,000, another 300,000, but eventually what happened was that they um, one of them we kept in, but there were a lot, a lot of negotiations. We had to screen the film for the people, et cetera, and they gave us a reduced fee. Still a lot of money, but I could not take the chance anymore. I couldn't recut the scene anymore. We were so late. Exactly. To deliver. <laughs> so we're trapped, basically the same situation. I'll pay anything. I said, get, take it from my pocket. I'll do it. No problem. Just because it's, uh, for this film, actually, we have used like two Mario Coney tracks from uh, Once Upon a Time in America. And because I play that on set, so it's very hard for me to, to, to replace it. And also, I think this is kind of a, a homage, right. my salute to these two wonderful people, Sergio Leone and, and Morricone. But it's so expensive. So it's right before we, we do the final mix, I have to send people oh. to Prague to record it. Oh. Oh. But uh, it's, it's, it's desperate, very desperate. Yeah. I like the idea of using uh, themes from other movies in movies. Yeah, I, d I never have a problem with that because yeah. it's, it's, it brings with not only the music but also the history of it. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah. Just be, I think we only have a uh, little time, but I just I wanted to ask a few questions from the audience. But one thing, could you talk about the writing process? Uh, uh, how detailed was the script or not? Well, and, and uh, actually, everybody said you, he, he don't work with the script. is is true, but uh, but somehow I'm writing every day. Yeah. So it basically, it's like um, I I don't I have a frame of the story, and I keep changing because I can see what the the the, the genesis of the characters. I can see like Tony's going this way, and Gomorrah actually is. Uh, going that way. I don't know your process, but my process is always I start from the character first. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah. And I also start from their physical presence. Mm -hmm. So if I have a guy there, I have to know like what's in his pocket yeah. and in his jacket. And, and for like the character of Gomer, 
we know she's not she's a modern woman in a traditional Thai society. So the, her outfit basically is not purely Chinese. He has some elements yeah, in it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we have a, a time for uh, a few questions. All right. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, I, I the question was about, um, sorry, uh, it was about uh, Peter Jackson and James Cameron talking about high frame rates. And the gentleman said that it, uh, in this film there were some wonderful effects just from lower frame rates. Yeah, because so we sometimes we shot with like four frames per second and eight frames per second, and we print it, double print it. And because I, I, I tried that since my first film, and because it did deliver something, a texture that feels like it's very speedy, but actually it's very slow. Mm -hmm. You can see clearly about it. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it's also good to, to use this because it's also for emotional reasons. If someone, like uh, in a film, <laughs> at a certain point, some of the close-up of uh, Zhang Ji I shot yeah. with like eight frames per second, I said, can you do your acting two times slower? <laughs> oh, that's great. that's great. Because sometimes it gives an extra mile for the actor and actress so they can actually put all the emotion out. Oh, and, and I can keep the scene like that. But also you can feel like their body a little bit of shaking. And that's something that I, I, I normally do. For a moment like this, so that that's extraordinary because you do feel it in close-ups. It's quite yeah. quite amazing, especially the big the big scene. But